tractor. The drawbar needs to be removed for clearance for the wand sensor on the scout guidance system. The quick hitch must be removed because the three-point arms will fit into the scout itself. And the bottom sway block half should be removed so it's locked tight for safe transporting. Yet when the three-point is lowered, there's full swing for freedom of movement. On the front of the Scout, two hitch point locations are available, an inboard mounting for Cat 2, 3 narrow, and an outboard mounting for Category 3 wide three-point hitches. The three-point hitch frame is equipped with a locking mechanism and spring-loaded latch mechanism for easy hookup to your implement. The Scout is equipped with two three-inch cylinders mounted outboard from the center two-inch pivot pin providing ample power to guide up to a 16 row 30 Buffalo Cultivator or other brands. The hydraulic control block features three ports. The port above the solenoid valve is stamped P for pressure, R1 and R2 ports for open center hydraulic tractors and closed center hydraulic tractors. The R1 port is a free flowing port that flows approximately 18 to 20 gallons per minute. The R2 port for closed center hydraulic tractors is a restricted port of approximately two gallon per minute. On the side of the control manifold is a hydraulic flow control valve that is used to speed up or slow down the hydraulics to the scout cylinder. On the top of the hydraulic manifold is a pressure control valve with a screw adjustment. Uh, these are set to run at approximately 1500 PSI. Uh, this is used as a safety feature should your implement uh, hit an obstruction, so not to overload the hydraulics of the unit. Located on top of the hydraulic manifold and on the side are hydraulic check valves that prevent the scout from being run backwards should the operator hook the hydraulic hoses up in reverse from the tractor. On the front of the hydraulic valve block, there are two electronic solenoids mounted to activate a plunger within the solenoid valve itself. Uh, one solenoid is responsible for left-hand movement, the other for right-hand movement. The small black box is called a junction box, and its sole purpose is a junction point for all the cables to go to so we have one single clean control cable to go up to the tractor. The toolbar sensor is mounted directly above the pivot pin of the Scout. It monitors right and left hand movement of the toolbar and Scout. Its purpose is twofold. One, two, create a true center line going down through the field, and two, when the mercury switch tells the scout to center up, this sensor overrides the wand sensor and goes to center. So when the farmer pulls into the crop row again, the cultivator and everything is square with the world. An adjustable mercury switch is used to center the scout when the three-point is lifted, usually mounted on the top of the top link or left arm location wherever ever it can be located safely. A mercury switch with glass cylinder and mercury in it makes contact to the two wires coming out the front of the mercury switch that can be adjusted to center after the cultivator clears the ground through the slotted holes on the mounting bracket. sensor in this case is mounted on an optional outboard wand mounting kit. This allows the operator to move the wand sensor out from under the tractor for easy setting and adjustment and monitoring of the wand sensor. The scout control box has been positioned back 
on the three-point area for better illustration purposes. Uh, the control box must be connected to a, a consistent 12-volt power source. Uh, we usually recommend going direct to the battery. A good power connection inside uh, the remote power units are acceptable as long as we know we have a good consistent ground. On the control box you'll notice a series of lights. You have a toolbar and wand light. Each of those respective lights will turn red and green when receiving power from the two photocells in each of the sensor boxes, as well as a third valve light that is acknowledging power output to run the solenoid on the hydraulic valve line. Mounted above the control box is a scout monitor box that's also included. This allows you to visualize whether you're driving right or left of center on the road through a series of red and green LED lights. Uh, also, it allows you to use the monitor for diagnostic purposes on the wand or toolbar resolvers. On the face of the scout control box are two knobs and two toggle switches. The one toggle switch to the right is the on-off power switch that illustrates an amber light when ample power is supplied and a red low power light should improper power be offered to the scout. The scout control box also features two control knobs to be used either in manual position or automatic, which allows you to cheat a little bit to the right or left of the row uh, for any purpose that would cause the implement not to be perfectly centered to the crop. The Scout monitor box through a series of LED lights will illustrate if you're favoring to the right or left of the row with your tractor driving. This is used just as a guide to give you an idea how you're positioning your tractor in relationship to the crop row. The wand sensor is designed to sense two crop rows at once with two independent wands, each sensing a crop row set in a V configuration so they automatically feed into the crop row. A skid plate is mounted on the front to help protect the wand sensor and also act as a counterweight for the wands themselves, making them much more sensitive to a small crop. For proper wand setting, try to achieve approximately a one to one and a half inch ground clearance at the front curvature of the wands. The two photocells, when sending power output to the control box, will light their respective sensor light red and green. So imagine one of the photocells as being the red photocell and the other the green. When you receive a red and green light from each sensor, it is a true continuity check to prove those photocells are functioning properly. 